Hi, honey. It's Nana. And like Alessi, I had him sit by me. So you can say hi to him. Say hi, Luna. Over here. Say hi, Luna. I guess he doesn't want to talk today. So I have a book for you. Chester Raccoon and the Acorn Full of Memories. Okay, here we go. Chester Raccoon climbed into his tree hollow and frowned. Cause Skedittle Squirrel didn't come to school today, he told his mother. Owl teacher said he had an accident and wouldn't be coming back. What's an accident? An accident is something that happens that isn't supposed to happen, said Mrs. Raccoon. She lifted Chester onto her lap and folded her warm, loving arms around him. Did Owl Teacher say anything else about Skiddle Squirrel? Did she say he died? I think so, said Chester, but I don't know what that means either. Mrs. Raccoon thought for a minute. Do you remember what happened to old Mr. Beaver? And Chester nodded. His heart quit beating and his body didn't work anymore. That's right, Mrs. Raccoon said. That's what happens when somebody dies. She puts a comforting arm around Chester's shoulders. That's what happened when Skiddle Squirrel died. Oh, now that Chester understood what happened to Skiddle Squirrel, his insides felt jumbled and he was really sad. Mrs. Raccoon gently stroked the top of his head. I'm very sorry about Skiddle Squirrel, Chester. Chester turned his face to his mother. Skiddle Squirrel is my friend and I want to play with him, he cried. Why won't his body work? Why doesn't his heart beat? I'm afraid that's one of those questions no forest animal can answer. It's like asking who lights up the sun and then blows it out, or who collects the pieces of the moon and then it disappears and then puts the pieces back together again. I know what you can do. Why don't you make a memory of Skiddle Squirrel? That way you'll never forget him. How do you make a memory? asked Chester. You begin by finding something that reminds you of him, the way your piece of tree bark reminds you of the hollow where we used to live. I'd rather have Skiddle Squirrel than something that reminds me of him sniffled Chester. I know you would. And I know how much you'll miss him, but making a memory of him will help. She lifted Chester up off of her lap, wrapped his tiny hands in hers. Tell me what Skiddle Squirrel liked. He liked butterflies, Chester said thoughtfully, and acorns. Butterflies and acorns. And his mother repeated out loud, and where was Skiddle Squirrel's favorite place to play, the butterfly pond. Mrs. Raccoon bent down and kissed Chester on his forehead. Chester's ears twitched and his muzzle blushed. Let's go see if butterflies and acorns can help us make a memory of Skiddle Squirrel, shall we? She asked him and she led Chester outside, picked up his little brother Ronnie, who had his curious little nose inside an anthill, and walked the two cubs down the wooded path towards the butterfly pond. On their way to the pond, Chester's best friend Cassie popped out from behind the tree. Where are you going? She said to Chester. We're going to the butterfly, butterfly pond to make a memory of Skiddle Squirrel. Do you want to come? Okay, but I don't know how to make a memory. You find something like my piece of tree bark, only it's not tree bark because it has to do with butterflies and acorns and it's something that reminds you of Skiddle Squirrel. I can do that, said Cassie. As the four raccoons scurried toward the pond, more and more of Skiddle Squirrel's friends asked if they too could come along and make a memory. Before long, two deer, six skunks, three possums, 14 rabbits, a badger, a bluebird, six morning doves, a green snake, 22 mice, 
four squirrels, a beaver, two chipmunks, walked and crawled and slithered and hopped and flew to the edge of the pond. I have never seen so many butterflies, said Mrs. Raccoon when they arrived. There were butterflies and butterflies and more butterflies. Butterflies were everywhere. They were all over the pond, in the trees, under the bushes, on the flowers, and resting on single blades of grass between the animal's feet. What do I do now? asked Chester, as a bright purple butterfly balanced on the tip of his nose. Tell me a story about Skittle Squirrel, said Mrs. Raccoon. What kind of story? Something that happened here at the pond. Chester scrunched his nose and thoughtfully, and the butterfly flew away. Once when we were playing here, about a gazillion butterflies landed on Skiddle Squirrel all at the same time. He was so covered in butterflies, you could hardly see his fur. He thought that with all those butterflies standing on him, he could fly like they do. That's a wonderful memory, laughed Mrs. Raccoon. Do you have another one? One day, Skiddle Squirrel made all of us late for school because a caterpillar was turning into a butterfly and he wouldn't let us miss it. We all watched the butterfly come out of its chrysalis and open its brand new wings. Skiddle Squirrel was so excited. He told all the other butterflies what happened, even though they already knew. That's a lovely memory, agreed Chester's mother. Suddenly, Chester looked sad. One day after school, Skiddle Squirrel came here and buried all of the acorns he had collected for winter. But when he wanted them, he forgot where he buried them. He really loved those acorns. Everyone in school helped him look for them. Did he find them? Said Mrs. Raccoon. No, nope, said Chester. Mrs. Raccoon stood up on her back legs and looked around. She spotted a hillside not far away and patted Chester on top of his head. I think I know where those acorns are buried, she told him. She pointed to a small group of brand new trees growing at the base of the hillside. Those are skiddle squirrel trees, shouted Chester when he saw the young trees for himself. The forest made a skiddle squirrel memory. I believe it did, said Mrs. Raccoon. Those trees, your stories, and the butterflies all make wonderful memories of Skiddle Squirrel. Chester suddenly noticed a beautiful black and orange butterfly on the ground beside his front foot. When it folded its wings, he saw the acorn beneath it. He gently and carefully lifted the acorn and the butterfly off the ground. He held his breath and waited patiently until the butterfly flew away on his own. He grabbed the acorn on his front paw and looked up at his mother. This acorn is the memory I'll take home. I'll keep it with my special piece of tree bark, and every time I look at it, I'll think of Skiddle Squirrel. It's a beautiful acorn, Chester. It'll make a perfect memory. With the acorn securely clutched in his paw, Chester scampered over to the skittle squirrel trees. He placed a kissing hand on each new trunk. I'll never forget you, skittle squirrel. Thank you for being my friend. That is so sweet. So I'll turn this so you can see Legolas. Oh, there's a butt. You don't want his butt. Turn around, Legolas. Oh, there he is. He's kind of looking around. Oh, now they're kind of fighting. Ooh, ooh. Do you see him? There they are. Oh, they be such naughty cats, can't they? So with the book, Grandma Debbie and Nana are trying to help you remember Mom Mom. And the way we do that is by having you watch videos. And then you can remember memories, like when Mom Mom wear the green bracelets that we have at the house you wear all the time. Um, you have a memory of Mom Mom helping you roll the pool from Dollar Store 
all the way home on the road. You were only one, but you remembered Mom Mom rolling your swimming pool down the road. That's a memory. Um, and Grandma Debbie helps you with the memories when she plays the videos for you of Mom Mom so you can hear what she sounds like again and you can remember what she looks like. So thank you, Grandma Debbie. I really appreciate helping me keep Ashley alive in all of our hearts. All right. I will read more books later, but I'm really hungry right now, so I'm going to go and have my supper. But I love you. Have a really good day. Or if it's nighttime, sleep tight. And I will see you soon. I miss you like absolute crazy. Love you, sweetie.